Hey guys, so I was about to make a video on a 10-22 bug out rifle build, but the uh, approaching Hurricane Irma has kind of put a nix on that. I figured I'd do something for you guys that's a little more topical and a little more time sensitive for some of you folks out there. I'm sure many of you live in the projected storm track and uh, because of that, I wanted to do a quick little supplemental bug out bag guide. Now, if you go onto FEMA's website, um, there's a couple of guides on there that'll say, you know, don't forget water, don't forget food, don't forget your medication. And these things are all extraordinarily important. If you're diabetic or if you have a heart problem and you absolutely positively need your medication to live, get that stuff squared away right now. Don't wait. Don't wait till 24 hours beforehand. Do it now. For the majority of you, it's not too late. So, you know, go get on it right now. Um, but this is a little guide real quick to add on to all the things that they're suggesting you bring that'll help round out your bug out kit or your get out of dodge kit to, uh, to include things that FEMA would never dare include in theirs for either political reasons, they don't want to tell you to bring a gun because uh, that would be scary of them, or the implicit reasons of telling someone to bring a gun, which is that the government cannot protect them in the event of a natural disaster, which they cannot. So anyway, get to it. I've got a duffel bag right here that I know is pretty well made. It's made of ballistic nylon. It's double stitched. Uh, if you don't have something like that, that's not a big deal. Just grab whatever you have that works. If that's an old backpack, whatever, make sure there's no holes in it, ideally. Uh, a little couple of little extra things you want to have that are not included in the FEMA guide, so to speak. Um, they'll tell you to bring a little flashlight. Get a nice, bright, aluminum-bodied flashlight if you have one. Uh, do not rely on a weapon mounted light because the last thing you want to do in a high stress situation is flag people with a firearm to determine whether they're friend or foe. Because at that point, even if they are a friend, they're going to assume you're trying to kill them and they may extend the same courtesy to you. Ideally bring two or three sets of extra batteries for it. Assume you won't be able to recharge it or get new batteries for upwards of a week. Another item a big heavy knife, I, ideally one with a full tank. This is a K-Bar, uh, it's very beat up. I'm sure you guys can't tell from there because it's kind of zoomed out. I am filming without K right now. And um, it's, uh, this is not a terribly sharp knife as you can, you can see. That's not why I'm using it. And ideally I would say don't go with a Tonto style tip, but this is all I've got on hand at the moment. I'm not a big knife guy, but I do recognize the utility of having something with a full metal tang that's also made of really, really good steel. You can pry stuff with this open. In a pinch, you can open up a can of food or something. And uh, it's got serrations here, which I think you'd always have serrations at the base just so you can cut through rope if you need to. Um, the, the full size tang or the full length tang, which is made of the same material as the uh, hilt and the, the blade itself, is really good for a makeshift hammer. Ideally, you should have some kind of sheath because you don't want to walk around with a full size knife just in your pocket. Uh, this one, you can see it has like, like sections to uh, either use shoestrings or rope to tie to something. Ideally, it's something you can thread through your belt and have on you at all times, but this isn't going to be a use all the time kind of, uh, kind of tool. This is going to be, oh, I need something big to whack something with. If you want something a little more handy, uh, I've got this, this little folder, a two inch folder. It's, I, I hand sharpened it. It's decently sharp. It's not a terribly expensive knife. I think it was like $20 or some such. Uh, if you buy an El Cheapo knife, understand that it's going to be dull and it's going to lose its edge pretty quickly. This is an emergency bug out kit, so I'm not going to put a $500 knife in there. I'm going to put something that if I need to cut open a package of food or I need to cut a piece of rope, that'll work. The benefit of having a little folding knife is you can just store it away in your pocket. You're not going to scare anybody and you're always going to bring it with you because it's never going to get in your way. Another item. Like I said, don't forget, these are items that are not included on the FEMA list for the most part. This one right here, uh, and I'm, this is not a sponsor, this is nothing like that. This is called a Life Straw. You've never heard of it before. It's basically a self-filtering um, water straw. So you can, you know, you can basically, actually you can totally put it inside of a mud puddle, take a big gulp through it, you're not going to get sick. It'll filter out contagions, it'll filter out waterborne bacteria like Guardia, and uh, it'll keep you alive if you can't get any water anywhere else. And do not get me wrong, this does not replace bottled water or fresh water. It is a stopgap. It's, oh God, I'm out of water and all I can find is a puddle to drink from. Always pack as much bottled water as humanly possible. Yes, it's heavy, but it can absolutely save your life. If you're bugging out in a vehicle, put as much water as you can feasibly store in the trunk and then be realistic and, and know that 
if something happens to the car, if you run out of fuel, if you have to go on foot, there's no way in hell you'll be able to carry even like half of it. Trust me, it's not expensive to buy bottled water, especially if you do it beforehand. Uh, and it's worth every penny. I mean, worst case scenario, you can start chugging water right before you uh, get out of the car and leave. Another item. This is absolutely crucial, and I'm sure this is in the FEMA guide, but it bears repeating. This is a little first aid kit, and this is a waterproof first aid kit. This is actually one that uh, Henry sent me a while ago when I bought their AR-7 survival rifle. Um, I like that, uh, that it's watertight. I've added a few items into it, like some extra gauze. I've got some quick clot in here as well. Uh, quick clot's not necessarily, necessarily a must have, but it's a very nice thing to add to your bug out kit. If you're not familiar, it's a powdered coagulant you can put on a gunshot wound to stop the immediate bleeding and potentially save someone's life. Um, I also like to keep some sticks in here for a tourniquet, but uh, you can always find sticks out in the wild, so to speak. Another item. And this one is, is much more firearm centric. So I've got, this is a, a standard Glock 17 magazine, nine millimeter, holds 17 rounds of ammunition. And this is an extended one. And it's a Glock brand one. Uh, both SGM Tactical makes a nice reliable one as well as Glock. Uh, this is a 30 round magazine, a 31 round magazine. And I don't, reckon, I don't recommend carrying the gun with this inserted into it, but this is really good to have as much ammo on you as possible. Ideally, you want 100 rounds of defensive ammunition. Uh, sure, you'll almost never, ever, ever need 100 rounds of defensive ammunition in this kind of scenario, but the last thing you want to do is say, you know, shoot, I'm out of ammo. And those words should never cross your lips unless you're literally surrounded by, you know, deceased aggressors, basically. Uh, which then leads to the obvious inclusion of a sidearm that uses that ammunition. This is a Glock 19 Gen 4. I've got one flush fitting magazine full of defensive ammunition in it. And, um, and I chose this because it's reasonably easy to conceal. I'm more of a 17 kind of guy, but if I'm grabbing a gun to shove into a holster and take with me, I want something that's at least moderately concealable. Uh, in terms of what you should pick for your sidearm, anything that you're proficient with that's in a substantial caliber that's also reliable. What do I mean by substantial caliber? Um, anything over 380 is decent enough. I would say that my bare minimum is 38 special, though I would go with an auto loading firearm over a revolver in this kind of scenario, just simply because reloading a revolver is a pain in the ass compared to reloading an automatic firearm that's magazine fed. Um, now, another crucial part of taking that gun with you is if you're in a bug out scenario, you might be uh, marching or hiking or whatever for miles upon miles or hours and hours. So put it in a holster that you can conceal, like an inside the waistband holster that's also very comfortable and one that you've worn before. You wouldn't take brand new hiking boots on a long distance hike because you know you'd get blisters. Similarly, you wanna take a holster that's already broken in before you commit to using it for the entire time. So for me, that's an alien gear uh, inside the waistband holster I've got on right now. Uh, it's very comfortable. I've worn it, I don't know, hundreds of times. And in addition to that, I also have a, a nice sturdy nylon belt, which you definitely want. If you're worried about flooding in general, that water can do some serious damage to leather items. And more importantly, it makes them shrink. You do not want to be uncomfortable when you have to march miles upon miles. Um, additionally, you want that nylon belt to use a quick release clasp uh, I have a Blade Tech belt on right now that has a very, very sturdy aluminum clasp on it with, I think, brass securing um, notches or whatnot. Uh, in addition, I like to also carry in a Blade Tech mag carrier one additional magazine that I can quickly get to. I say this because if you've ever ran around with a magazine in your pocket before, it can bang around everywhere. It's not bad when you're casually strolling through the mall with your wife and helping her shop for something. But if you're doing you know, suicide sprints, you don't want something bouncing around in your pocket, potentially hitting you right in the groin and bringing your, you know, your, uh, your fighting spirit, so to speak, to a dead stop. Now, why did I say a concealed holster and not like an open carry holster? In that kind of scenario, you don't want to make yourself a target. Don't draw attention to yourself. It sounds like an obvious thing, but in a polite society, yes, open carry will dissuade most bad people from trying anything. In a life or death scenario, when people aren't thinking straight, maybe they haven't eaten for a few days, keep your cards close to the vest. In this case, keep your gun concealed. With a solid inside the waistband holster, you can always pull your shirt away and use it as an outside the waistband holster. But for the most part, you're not stuck with the more clumsy, lengthier draw time of a deep carry gun.
Now the last thing I'm going to recommend for people, and this is, uh, this is pretty obvious, but I don't even know if this is on their guide or not, uh, two more things. Bug spray. For God's sake, bug spray. If you live in the southeast, mosquitoes are the plague. They are terrible, and they will never leave you alone. So if you have to go marching out with family or whatever, the last thing you want to do is be swatting away flies or getting West Nile. So I try to go with 100% DEET. It's super unhealthy. I'm sure it gives you cancer, but cancer in 20 years is better than immediate death. Another thing that you want to consider is a can opener. Uh, the worst thing that could happen to you is to find all kinds of canned food that will sustain you and your loved ones and then realize you have no way of, of functionally opening them. Sure, you can bash one open with a rock if you absolutely have to, or ideally if you bring any canned food with you, get stuff that has like the quick pull tabs, but these things are what, like $5? Go get one, toss it in your bug out bag and forget about it. Now, like I said, this is not everything. This is not the end all be all of everything you need, but these items in addition to the bare necessities like food, water, medication, um, ideally somewhere to bug out too, can help make your life infinitely more tolerable in the event of a natural disaster. If this video does well, I'll be doing a bug in version of this, kind of a bare necessities, last minute checklist at like T minus 24 hours, something you can grab in the last day right before everything goes you know, sideways and share with you guys some of, some of my experience having to deal with bugging in uh, when I when last year during Hurricane Matthew when I lost power for a, just about a week. So it wasn't, you know, the end times. There weren't, you know, roaming factions. There weren't roving factions. There weren't warring factions outside my house like it was Mad Max or something. But you did learn some interesting things, and you can definitely appreciate the, uh, the niceties of a society when you don't have them. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, stay safe out there. And if it looks too deep to, to go across when you're driving, walking, whatever, just avoid it, man. It's not worth it. Thanks, guys.